It's a Central New York rivalry today in the JMA Wireless Dome. 56 miles apart, 108 years of history renewed this afternoon. It's Syracuse and Hobart with the Krause Simmons Trophy on the line. And we welcome you inside the broadcast booth. He's the former Q's goalie, Evan Malloy. I'm Trey Redfield. Thanks so much for joining us. Evan, this is going to be a matchup that comes down to Syracuse's defense and Hobart's fast-paced offense. Syracuse has been rock solid on the defensive end, really holding teams, especially at home, while Hobart's offense has been red hot. They're able to fill up the net, so it's going to be a good one. This has been a matchup that Syracuse has dominated. Nine straight wins for the Orange, but someone that stands out a lot for the Statesman is a Central New York product in himself. Anthony DeTalus, he's been dominant all year and he's turning into a leader now too he's mr do it all for hobart he can score he can facilitate and he's the leader in the locker room coach greg raymond described him as intense and intelligent that's a great combination for a leader 19 goals and eight assists for the former west genesee wildcat and then you go over on the syracuse side it's the freshman joey spolina that's been dominant all season with nine man up goals it's been fun to watch in 2023 the freshman phenom has been stellar for Syracuse so far this season. He can score, he can facilitate as well, and he's great at getting to where he wants to go, finding those seams in the defense and putting the ball in the back of the net. Two goals on Tuesday in what was a 22-6 orange win over St. Bonaventure. And recently, Spolina has gotten some recognition from inside lacrosse, just named to the early season impact freshman list. That just tells you how great he's been this season, and you see the stats as well. Yeah, he's, he's getting into top with the history at Syracuse right now. Mike Lavelle, he's a point away from breaking his freshman scoring. So Spelina's right up there with the grades, and I expect him to continue that throughout the season. Spelina, the number one recruit in the class of 2022, the first for Syracuse since Jordan Evans back in 2013. Let's check out the goalie matchup for today, and we begin with the LIU transfer in Will Mark. He had eight saves in in the win against St. Bonaventure on Tuesday and was the NEC Defensive Player of the Year in 2021 and 2022. You go over to Hobart, a team that was just in the Northeast Conference, making a move to the newly formed Atlantic 10 Conference, and it's a new face, Ellis Wilson, making his second start in net as a freshman. Adam Shea and Johnny Rajusa at midfield for the opening faceoff. For the 108th time, it's Syracuse and Hobart. And it starts with a face-off violation against Virtusa. Gary Gate talked about it a lot, Evan. If Syracuse can win the face-offs today, then it's going to be in a good spot. Yeah, and that's been a challenge for them, right? Getting possessions, keeping possessions. So if you're winning at the face-off X, it really boosts your offense. Over to Alex Rosa on the left wing. Expect Rosa to be set a lot today because there's Alex Rosa, Max Rosa, plenty of family in attendance as well for this one. Back to Rosa at X. Here's Brady Simons. Had a goal on 10 shots and a 13 and 11 win over Providence on Saturday. It's Hobart team that's four and three overall. Back and forth as the season has gone along with wins and losses. So far early here, we're seeing Hobart invert the short stick defensive midfielder, try to get a good matchup down low. Here's John Jude Katzenein, didn't have the angle. It goes to the Harlem native and James Green. Another invert here. Marked by Carter Rice. Thought they were gonna have a screen, but no! Instead, Hobart strikes first! This invert offense, it looks like that's what Hobart's gonna rely on a lot. It, it sets you up for a good matchup at X behind the net. Allows you to facilitate without that long stick pressure. So you see here, it's just a size up of your matchup. You're one on one with a short stick defensive midfielder. Get a get an angle on the goalie, put it in the back of the net. Easy as that. Great shot. Constantine's 11th goal this season. 11 goals and one assist. Sophomore has been fun to watch all season. Three goals against Providence. And it's his fourth straight game with a goal going into the game against the Friars. Make it today his fifth. He's been in and out of the lineup too, so he's some more offensive juice for an already strong Hobart offense. That's right. Coming into this one, just five games played and making his fifth start this season over the for the or for the Statesman against the Orange. Now we get to see the Orange on offense. Here's Sam Alexo. Has two pole goals this season. One of them coming just about a week and a half ago against Hofstra, where he scored from midfield. 
This is a big possession for this young Syracuse team. You got punched just now on Hobart's offensive possession. Take your time, get a good look. Much different from Tuesday when the Orange scored in 25 seconds to start off the game. Here's a shot and it's stopped by Wilson. The rebound, nothing doing. That's now huge. it's up to the statement. State's been a clear. That's huge for Ellis Wilson's confidence. As a freshman goalie coming into the dome for your second start, to get a quality save like that is massive. Strong ride for the Orange, though, as Kakemo collects the ground ball. Michael Leo slowing it down. Freshman from Seaford, New York. Here goes Alex Simmons. Had a hat trick on Tuesday. Shot put on, missed wide to the right. Ben Thompson with the shot, but we have ourselves our first flag today. I think we're gonna have a late hit here, Trey. Let's see what the officials have to say. Hobart 41, 41 blue, one minute, unnecessary roughness, one minute. One minute for Mark Sanat, the grad student from Wellesley, Mass. And that's a big loss, because he was the A-10 defensive player of the week last week. Yeah, they're really cracking down on this too, offici officials are, because they don't want any late hits, nothing to the head. So Finn Thompson got that off and it was just too late to slide. And now Syracuse can go to work on the man up. The most man up goals in the NCAA, the Orange hold that title. We're going to Owen Hill to X, up top. The Orange love to facilitate, but it was Simmons that couldn't corral. Michael Leo thought about it. Set back up top to Thompson. Into the middle, now scooped up by the Statesman. Hobart can go to work, but last time we saw Hobart try and clear, it was Syracuse that was staying physical. We saw that a lot on Tuesday against the Bonnies. Syracuse is a great riding team, and it's led by Joey Spilina. You know, you see him on the stat sheet making big plays, but he also does in the riding game that won't show up on that box score. I thought Syracuse forced that a little bit on the man up. You know, you have an extra man, right. move it around, get the easy look. They forced that crease view. And now we're back to full strength. David Peterkin just had it on the left wing. Now it's back into the stick of Rosa. Back with Peterkin, guarded by Brandon Aviles, who's making his first game back after an injury. Back to Green, who's the quarterback of this Hobart offense. Great speed and even better stick skill. This is a guy that we've been watching all week, Anthony DeTalus. Loses his footing, though, on goal line extended. They move Alexo on DeTalus. So Alexo's become the go-to cover guy. As Will Mark makes the save, but finish that thought. He's always going to cover the best player on the team. It doesn't matter if they play midfield or down low. Alexo's the number one cover guy, and that's a great quality to have in your top defenseman. And we talked about it throughout the week with uh, head coach Greg Raymond for Hobart, how you know it's going to be a tougher matchup for the Taylors as he progresses into that leadership role and being the best point, being the best goal scorer, because now you're going to have a pull on you and no longer short stick the middies. And all eyes are on you too, so Hobart needs somebody to step up, and that's really what's gonna bring this offense to the next level. If they're the second guys, Delano, some others can really fill up the net and help the, the tail us out. Coach Raymond trying to figure out who that second option can be. Mentioned Delano a ton. Not too much scoring so far. Five minutes in, Hobart's up one nothing, and now it makes it two nothing. You're going to go back to the well if it works. We saw another invert there. This time it's Chad Bach. Again, one-on-one. -on -one, Syracuse might need to start sliding a little bit early here. Bach's a big midfielder. He's able to use his size, back down, nice little inside roll, and then tucks it past Mark. You can't ask Mark to make this save. This is one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. Great move. Coach Raymond also mentioned Bach being that second guy as well, someone that is a phenomenal initiator, but probably the most fit guy on the team as well. His 10th goal this season in seven games. He's a big boy too. He's going to be a problem for short stick defensive midfielders. Making a return as well. He did not play in that two goal win against Providence. As Shea wins another face off. The senior having his way on Johnny Rachusa early. 
Let's see if Hobart goes back to that invert look. I would keep going until Syracuse stops it. Taylor's had a screen. And Syracuse that picks it up quickly. Max Rosa marking him on defense. A shorty as well. The Taylor's with the shot, saved by Mark. Transition for Cuse. They work so fast, so quickly. Kakemo gives it to Cole Curse on the wing. This is where Cole can work best on that left wing. If he has the shot, he's going to take it. That was a great job by Hobart to get back on defense and stall that transition opportunity. I'm sure Coach Raymond emphasized that in practice this week. Because normally you will see a Syracuse shot put on right there, but that wasn't the case. Here's Luke Roa on Main Street. Over on the wing to Griffin Cook, another Syracuse native, played at Jamesville to win. to Owen Hiltz. He rips it on and it goes off the crossbar. Syracuse will keep though, as just, Cole Curse was there. Just how we were talking about the short stick matchups for Hobart, if you can get Owen Hiltz with a shorty, you go right away. 100%. The stick skill and him moving around as well. Gary Gay talked a ton about how Hiltz needs to continue to be moving his feet on offense, because that just elevates his game to a whole new level. He's an elite stick handler. If he can get... Oh, in. look at this! You just knew it was coming! Joey Spolina going behind the back just like he did it at Maryland. Does it here against Hobart. 22 doing 22 things. We talked about in the opener how good Spolina is at getting to his spots. Watch him methodically dodge here. He's not sprinting slow, absorb the contact, get to that five and five spot, and then he's got the stick skills to bury it. Fantastic finish behind the back. That's gonna be his trademark. He did it all in high school. He's gonna keep doing it on the hill. Sports Center top 10, maybe? You I, could make the case. Yeah, you I mean, could make the I, you case. could, you could. There's a lot of good games today, but he's got my vote. 24th goal on the season for the freshman. It's just one of those things where with Spolina, you, like, you see the highlights of him doing goals like that. You just don't know when it's coming. He's so deceptive, and I mentioned it. He He's not imposing as an athlete. He's not big, he's not super fast, but he's just such a high IQ lacrosse player. He knows what he wants, and he goes and gets it. So that behind the back, he's practiced it his entire life, so it's second nature for him. And now Spolina with that goal, he's top 10 in the nation in points as a freshman. Just tells you why inside the cross gave him so much praise yesterday. Another accolade for him. <laughs> and with that too, the orange are on the board, finally. Normally you see them go quickly on offense, but that's not the case. Make it 2-2 two -two though. Michael Leo knocks this up in a pair. Michael Leo's probably the best Dodger on this Syracuse team. He's so quick and he gets downhill. What we really need to work on is his shooting, right? He's not the greatest shooter on the Syracuse team. He's found had trouble finding the net right here. He's downhill, great release, buries it low and away in the goalie. That's a tough save. Great shot by Leo. Plenty of history between these two, if you're not new to this. The Krause Simmons Trophy was introduced in 1986. It's Babe Krause, the Hobart head coach from 1925 to 1966. Hobart has been a D2, D3 powerhouse throughout the 20th century, and that was Syracuse. It's Roy Simmons Sr. who led the way for the Orange from 1931 to 1970, and the legacy was carried on by Roy Simmons Jr. Syracuse leads this series 32 to three since the trophy debut, and you were part of a couple of Krause Simmons thrillers as well. Yeah, my first start actually was against Hobart, which is a pretty, at Hobart, pretty right. intense. They have great fans that show out. Uh, and then, yeah, we played there one more time. We, I've raised it four times. It's a great rivalry, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. The chirp is so much different when you play at Boswell Field, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of chatter from the fans. <laughs> it's worse when you're on the bench. I like playing and not being so close to them. So Syracuse goes with a new face-off man in Jack Fine, and he picks up the Orange's first win this afternoon. It's two all here in the dome between Hobart and Syracuse. The Statesman scored the first two goals, but then the Orange answered right back with a goal from Joey Spolina, another behind the back, that is. And then Michael Leo, now to get up at two. Here's Griffin Cook out on the wing. Picks up a double team. Now cuts back. Thought about a shot on the left side, but that's not the case. Back to the lefty Hiltz. 
Oh, look at the swim dodge, getting some space, but no dice after that. Shot put on, Ooh. that's a goal! Jackson Burt Whistle doing what he does best. And the Orange are in front for the first time today. Syracuse is spinning the ball really well right now on offense. Everybody's getting a touch, and it's moving quickly. There's no wasted possession, no wasted cradles. This honestly starts with Griffin Cook getting the defense off balance, then over to Hiltz. Hiltz makes a couple moves. All eyeballs are on him. He's got great vision, finds Burt Whistle, and he's got a cannon. Puts that in the upper corner on the young goalie. Top left corner on Wilson. That's Burt Whistle's 18th goal this season. And he's the one that has started to come off the bench and give a, and give Syracuse some sort of igniting power. As that second line on the midfield, two goals on Tuesday against St. Bonaventure. But him coming off the bench, is that something that you like? I do like it. I think they have a lot of firepower on offense. And the second line, getting juice from them, really lifts the team up. I mean, you just saw it right there. That's huge to get the second line scoring. So to put a not senior presence, but an upperclassman presence, someone with, with more uh, experience than others on that second line, someone who knows how to score, that's huge. Brandon Avila is with the stick fake. He honestly had me. I thought it was I thought it was Alex Simmons that had the ball the entire time. But here's Michael Leo driving in and having an opening on the wing. to Simmons, a hat-trick against St. Bonaventure. Oh, hit, hit. Thompson shooting and misses wide to the right. Cole Curse there, though, at X to keep possession for the Orange. Shot clock doesn't reset, though, because it did not hit the pipe or Wilson the goalie. Curse going in. His shot misses wide to the right as well. Syracuse can reset again, this time with Leo, the freshman. Syracuse is getting good looks. Take your time. The shots will come. At the wing. We begin. Fires and scores! Wow! Top shelf for the freshman. I said figure out the shooting, but I think he's got it down. Michael Leo has two goals already. He's a very difficult cover. He's got great speed, goes hard to this left hand, and then he's right in the middle of the field. There's a tough save for a goalie because he has the whole entire net. He lets that rip high and buries it. Leo and company fired up after that one as Syracuse extends its lead. Leo now up to 11 goals this season. Class A New York star player of the year playing alongside Joey Spolina in high school. Just a couple of kids making the move from Long Island up to the Q's just like what you did, partner. Yeah, going, you know, Long Island and Syracuse, there was a little stall there and getting the bigger crews, but now they're back in the dome. And York. getting Leo going, especially from a shooting perspective, that can change this entire offense for the back half of the year. They've lost a lot of close games against good teams. If he can beat a short stick matchup and can a couple goals, that changes this entire offense. So if he can continue that, sky's the limit for the O. It's given Syracuse a 4-2 lead, less than six minutes to go in the first quarter. Here's Burt Whistle. He scored once, doesn't get a second here though. Wilson with the save. Made his first start last week against Providence. Got 12 saves, allowed 11 goals. And was already the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Week. Hobart going the other way with some physicality. Shot put on, but Mark makes the save. Huge save by Mark. He's so good at playing the angles, and he's just so athletic. Swallows that up. Syracuse quickly gets it out to the other half. With Curse, the Lehigh transfer, and a captain for the Syracuse squad. Over to Simmons. It's on the 2022 towards on watch list coming over from Denver. Back to Simmons. Has the open. Spins left. Now back to his run. Great defense put on by Mark Sinat, the 8 10 defensive player of the week. Leo off the screen. Back to Thompson. Here's Hills. Rips it, sticks it. You knew it was coming. Syracuse is on fire. We got Owen Hiltz, the big shooter, canning this off. But we've talked about it already a bunch of times. They're moving the ball so well. They're making plays on offense. Everybody's getting touches. We have the save from Mark in transition. And this really could have changed the game here. If Hobart scores here, it's a completely different view. Syracuse is applying pressure on offense. But Mark makes a save, gets it down to his guys. 
And then, as I said, Syracuse is spinning this ball around. You got Finn Thompson throwing a dime down to Owen Hiltz. He doesn't need any time. He can scan that upstairs whenever. That's just his shot. If he's in that spot, near goal line extended out on the wing, you just know he's going to score. He's got a few shots, but yes, he's particularly very good at the low to high from that angle. Would you say that's the shot? I'd say that's his shot. His yeah. shot. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Another face off at the dot. This one's more of a battle. Had a lot of whistles and easy wins, but this time it's Carter Rice that picks it up, but Hobart gets it right back. Hobart should take the air out of this ball. You have a young goaltender. He's seeing a lot of rubber. Take your time, get back to this invert set. Get the defense a breather. Statesmen have not scored since around the 11-minute mark. Started this game up 2-0, now trailing 5-2 to the Orange. Here's Wisconsin on. He has a goal today for the Cues, marked by Brandon Navilas, the best short stick D mini in the eyes of Gary Gate, as the shot misses wide. Sophomore had a good look, good matchup as well with a shorty on him, but no dice. And he can shoot hard. He doesn't need a ton of space. He got his hands free and let it rip. Here's Troy Bartholme driving in. Has to go back up top. Haven't seen the Taylor's yet crack the score sheet for the Saints. Leading scorer on this Hobart team. There's Balser from X. Pounded well. The double team is applied, and Avila's collects the ground ball. But he loses it, though. Strong ride applied by Hobart, and it lets the Statesman get back on offense. Great ride by Hobart. That was a good double team by Syracuse. They've been beat on the invert a couple times. Right there, they were ready for it. Alex, Alex Rosa. Now it's a stick of Bradley Simon. Seven goals this season coming into today. Simon thought he had someone coming off the bench, but now has to go behind Cage. Here's Will Delano, former West Hill Warrior from Syracuse. Nice cut to his right. Shot put on. Mark there with the save again. What a save. That's a great look for Hobart. You do everything you want, and this is why Will Mark is different. Stares that shot in the face from about seven yards, makes a clean save too. No rebound, Syracuse is up for the clear. Mark now up to four saves, as Syracuse gets it across midfield, and it's Alexa that picks it up. Has two pole goals this season and set dishes. And now the Orange can finally slow it down with Griffin Cook. Strong offense put on by Hobart, but still no goals either way. That's a tired Syracuse group out there. It was a good offensive set for Hobart. I don't think you really change anything there, but you just got to can the shots. Mark's going to make saves. Results. Back to his right. How about a one-handed shot? Whistle blows. It's going the other way. I could feel that coming, and it took everything out of me not to make a noise as he was doing that. <laughs> the one-handed shot. <laughs> He's a creative player. You know something like that's going to show up sooner rather than later. The box players, the Canadian background, they play right. the indoor game. You all play with one hand. You don't learn the lefty and righty or righty and lefty. So for Hiltz, his offhand is really that shovel shot, yeah. either backhand or however he wants to do it. But that's really his only offhand option. How does the goalie prepare for something? You don't. You hope the defense stops him, honestly. <laughs> Back to James Green. What a goal line extended. Hobart swinging it around. Coach Raymond talked a lot about how this team needs to move the ball a ton. Shows why right there. Defense put on by Max Rosa as the Orange get it across midfield. Rosa's fired up on the sideline. It's a huge play when a D midi can make a play like that on his own, get it down to the offensive end. He stood up Bach there, has a goal already. That was massive. It's a huge play as well, especially when you're playing against your brother. Of course, family in the crowd, he's fired up. We were looking at shots of family throughout the game. We kept asking ourselves, who is it here from the Rosa family? <laughs> Here's Cole Kurse. Moving to his left, thinking about a shot. Now he puts it on and scores. The new house kid with his first. We've seen individual efforts. 
We've seen team efforts for Syracuse's offense so far. Here's another great individual effort. When you're playing defense, you don't want people to get into the middle of the field, and that's exactly what Cole Curls was able to do. He comes up with his right hand, rolls back to his left, and then he continues to carry. He has all that net to look at. That's a really hard save for a goaltender. Perfectly placed by Curse in that off-hit position. Not many goalies are going to make that save. The orange bench fired up in the waiting seconds of this first quarter, and it's Curse's 100th career point. 63 goal, or 67 goals, excuse me, 33 assists. That was his 18th career point with the orange. Coach Gate highlights what a leader he is, how big he's been for this group. I mean, on the field, he scores in bunches, but he's brought the locker room up. He does things the right way, and that's huge for young guys. So great kid. Can't say enough good things about him. Great ball of energy, too. I, I, I've worked at WAR Sports for a while, and he worked in the news department last fall. And just seeing him around the audio booths all the time, always a smile on his face, wherever he went. Another opportunity for the Orange before the first quarter comes to a close. The save put on by Wilson. Great save by Wilson there. You can see he has the goods. He's just a freshman in his second start. Coach Raymond said when he came to campus, yeah, we know this guy's going to be a player for us. It's going to be hard to keep him off the field. Long heave in the final seconds. And that's how the first quarter comes to a close. Six unanswered goals for the Orange. It was Hobart that started out fast. But it's Cuse that is answered after one quarter of play inside the Dome. But here in the Dome right now after one quarter of play, Syracuse is cruising. 6-2 over Hobart. All six of those goals unanswered. Big reason why has been a change at the faceoff X with Jack Fine picking up more wins for the Cuse. How it started out was that there were three straight faceoff wins for Hobart. But Fine goes in, and next you know the goal scoring starts. Faceoffs are huge with this team. Coach Gary Gate talked about it a ton yesterday. And his goal is to muck it up, make it a 50 50 ground ball. He yeah. likes his guys. You got guys like Alexo who are elite at picking the ball off the turf. So as long as it's a ground ball scrum, they like their chances. Here's Michael Leo. Over to Spelina at X. He's been working throughout the year, but still finds his way to get across goal line extended and make some epic goals like he had one in the first. A behind the back shot that puts Syracuse at a 2 2 tie. Hang up here for Syracuse. He's got time, no defender in front of him. Leo waiting for some options. Syracuse runs a play. 30 seconds to shoot for the Cuse. Look at the defense applied by Hobart. It's great defense, and defense will let, let the clock run out, right? Don't rush it, don't apply pressure, make create offense. Here's Simmons, off the screen, thought about a shot. 10 seconds to shoot now for the Orange. Ball pokes away, fought for. Hiltz tries to swing it to one of his teammates, but either way, it's Hobart that comes out with it. Nolan Firth gives it off. That's a big start for Hobart defensively to get that stop. Bouncer doesn't go, but it's the Statesman that's there with the rebound. Rosa collects. Now take the air out of it. Let's see if we can score. We've gotten our looks. That's what Hobart's saying. Here's the Taylors. Still looking for that first goal today. Leads the team in that category with 19. He puts on a shot here and misses wide to the right. We've only seen him dodge just a few times. Detailus is the kind of guy who wants the ball. I expect him to go get it in the second quarter and really try to make a play for his team. Now Syracuse takes over on the errant pass. This is Max Rosa. Still numbers here for Cuse. A delayed break. Got we to see them go in transition, try and score in transition. That's not the case as Hobart takes over once again. They had the look there, just didn't execute. Simons, Bradley Simons awaiting for some options on offense. That student that was all NEC second team last season, but the Statesman making the move to the Atlantic 10. Their first A-10 game is next week. And they take on St. Bonaventure, a team that Syracuse beat on Tuesday. There's Will Delano with a couple of nice moves. Constantine, his shot put on, that doesn't go. Great save by Mark. 
Detailus has to take an extra step there and try to move Mark off the pipe, it's a fairly easy save when they throw it right at you like that. Here's Avila's the short stick demitting. Looks at a winger, Carter Rice. Coming into this match of five and four overall. Win against St. Bonaventure on Tuesday, then last week during SU spring break, a win against Hofstra. Got the third line middies out there for the first time today. Shot put on. That's a goal. Joey Spolina once again. No need for the middies when you have Joey Spolina, I guess. Good look for the threes. They get the ball moving up to 22. This is Joey Spillina's sweet spot shooting. He always cans it on the man up. Here he's doing it on the six and six. All he needs is time and room. It's not an uncomfortable angle for him. He drops his shoulder, sticks it up high. Gets Wilson moving a little bit there. You just can't give a guy like Joey Spillina that much space. That really is his sweet spot too. We talked about Hilt's sweet spot. That's Spillina's sweet spot. Kevin Rice from 2015 never missed from there. And Spillina's right there with him. I've seen him hit that a ton of times already this season. Spolita's second on the afternoon and his 25th goal this season. He now joins Syracuse's top 10 all-time freshman goals list. He just continues to pile on the accolades in his freshman season. I mean, nothing like the pressure of going into year one and already wearing the number 22. That's in the rafters twice with Mikey Powell and Gary Gate. He's getting better week to week, too. He looks like he has a complete game right now. Dodging, finishing, you name it, he's doing it. It's only up from here for the Mount Sinai native. Here's Delano. He's silent as well. No points today, but has eight goals and five assists this season. Talks about as potentially one of those second options for Coach Raymond's offense. Here's Green at X. Taylor's his shot, a bouncer goes. The West City Wild got on the board for the first time today, and Hobart has finally answered. Their go-to guy in DeCalis was gonna have to step up at some point, gets a favorable matchup, and this is just money in the bank for Hobart. Sizes up Rosa, goes to his left. Nice little uh, split dodge back to his right hand, low and away on Mark. Perfect shot from Detailis. That's big for Hobart, too. Your emotional leader getting you guys back on the board closes the gap against Fuse. That's the leadership role that has been passed down. Last year, it was Ryan Archer. So Janesville DeWitt, Red Ram. He left the program. Sure. Now it's Detailis that comes in that takes over that role, being the leading goal scorer, but also being the vocal leader. I mean, Coach Raymond was talking about how this guy, like, that, you know, in shoulder pads, in practice, calling timeouts midway through just to have that game-like situation. Coach Raymond said he always had, always had been a leader. Even when he was a freshman, he had that in him. So they weren't worried about him stepping into that role, but they're very happy to see it come to fruition. Very happy to see a goal on the board as well. Last time we saw Hobart score was around the, this time in the first quarter. But now another chance brewing here. I don't think the score indicates what Hobart has been doing so far. Mark's made some good saves, just dr some drop passes inside. Hobart's offense looks better than the scoreboard indicates. You're going up against it. What was the time? The best goalie in their conference. Another shot put on. That's a goal as well. This time it's Bradley Simus. That's going to juice up Hobart. Back-to-back -back goals. Just said it. Their offense looks pretty good. They're starting to do what they want to do. You had Detailis getting a short stick matchup on the last goal. Here we have Sigmus getting, going to the middle of the field. When you get to the middle of the field, it makes it very difficult on the goalie. He moves Will Mark, and then Will Mark's uncomfortable making that save. Great individual effort. Simus, excuse me. Eight games played for the grad student. His eighth goal this season. All NEC second team last year with 22 goals and 23 assists. And at Burbank Academy in New Hampshire, he had 228 points in high school. That's an academy record. And finally, Hobart gets back on the board with the face-offs. Adam Shea, shot put on, it's saved by Mark. Right 
and an official's timeout. But quickly, though, Rosa put on that shot. But guess who was up to the task once again? Will Mark. And that was a great look. What's so impressive about Will Mark is he's not giving up any rebounds on these quality chances. A lot of the times goalies will just get a piece of it or get their body in front of it, and the ball's out for a ground ball. He's catching these shots almost effortlessly. Mark with seven saves on the afternoon. Big reason why the Orange are up three. Leo to his left. Behind the back, that misses. Kind of a heat check for Michael Leo. Exactly. Coming to use the goal away from a hat trick. Not even done with the first half yet. He's feeling it. Here's Curse. His shot misses wide to the left. And it's Hobart that wins the race. Look at the effort. That one came from Michael Christensen. That's a one-two punch right there with Christensen and Mark Sinan on the defensive side. Tough play for Cuse there. You always want to have backup when someone's dodging and they might take a shot. Right there, Hobart got the better of him. Now Hobart's got a clear. Good stick check there, but either way, have ourselves a whistle. It's going to get it across midfield. That's one of the biggest challenges with freshman goalies. They can stop the ball. If they're in the lineup, have confidence they can stop the ball. But communication with your defense, clearing the ball, making the right decisions, that really only comes with experience. So for a second starter, second game starter, it's tough to ask your goalie to do that. Those are the steps that Coach Raymond talks about. Simply where they're at right now with Wilson, they're just telling him, hey, stop the ball, we'll figure out the clears. There he goes again, stopping the ball, though. Great save on Finn Thompson inside. Leads to a whistle just on the outside of the crease. It's a crease violation. It's going the other way. Wilson's been really impressive by not getting in his own head. You let in a couple goals. He hasn't let in a cheap one, really. It's all been good shots. And then he's facing really quality chances and making strong saves. That's impressive for a young player. Ben Thompson stepping out. Brandon Avila's coming in. He can't get back in this game. It'd be a tough loss for the Orange. Freshman with 23 points this season coming into today. Now Hobart has an opportunity to cut this deficit to two midway through the second quarter. Here's Bach. Already has a goal today, marked by Carter Rice. Back to Simus. He just scored for Hobart. Instead, drops it an X to the tails. The screen has the opening, rips it. Mark is there with the save. That one almost got away from the netminer, but he comes up with it. That's eight stops now. Tatalis is going to want that back. He got to where he wanted to go, got to his strong left hand, had Mark moving, but just barely caught him. Really want to pull that hard to the back pipe there. Tatalis is getting busy, though. He's, he's had a ton of dodges here. He's scored. I like how he looks right now. And Syracuse did not get it across midfield in time. A late call there, as he had it on the far side, but the near side official said, hey, time's up. Now Hobart can move quickly. Taylor's this time working on the wing. Hobart this season has gone back and forth. A win, then a loss. A win, then a loss. That's how it's been throughout the year coming off a two-goal win against Providence on Saturday. Here's Bach once again. Nine marked well by Avilas. Look at the physical defense applied by the short stick. Hobart has nothing on this Q's defense on this possession. Maybe something here, though. As Jack Grooms gets his first touch. Rosa. Blocked once again. That one didn't really come much from an angle, and Mark easily made that save. A little bit of a rush shot. You had Mark out of the goal trying to neutralize the hang up there, so you shoot a little bit quicker than you should have, but Mark is so athletic. We've talked about it. He got right back in net and made an easy save. Now an opportunity here for Carter Rice. It sails high. He had Wilson fooled there. Wilson dropped his hands, and Rice put it up high. And no one really expects it from a winger as well. But with Carter Rice, if he has the shot, he's going to score. He's just one of those players that's very fast and very physical and can change the game in one shot. Defensive midfielders probably all played offense in high school, so they're capable scorers. Shot from Roa misses wide. Spolina there behind Cage. 
Always a good crowd in the Dome, especially when Syracuse and Hobart go at it. Here's Spolina forcing a yard sale, but Wilson is there with the stop. Now you got to clear. That's been the big question. Can Hobart clear? For the Statesman, it's can they clear, and for the Orange, it's can they win face-offs. That's her triple team. Had to go the long way, but either way makes it. Now Hobart can take that deep breath. Ten minutes into the second quarter, trailing by three. That's exactly what they should do here, too. Take a deep breath, collect yourself, get your best players on the field, and get a good look. Here's Peterkin. A little hesitation. They didn't have the angle, though, on the right side. Taylor's this time marked by Samalexo, the LSM. One of, if not Syracuse's best LSMs this season. Up top now, Delano. Broken stick on the field. Hard wrap check from Rosa. Broke Peterkin's stick coming up. Now he has to step out. 20 seconds to shoot for Hobart. Anzadon comes in. He got the game's first goal. And now it's in his cross. 10 seconds to shoot now. Gives it up. Delano, he's got to get it off quickly. He's poked away by Alexo. Here we go, end to end action. Oh, what a check. defense from the junior, but what a check right at midfield. Either way, Sam trying to collect it back up, and he gets the ground ball finally. It took a little bit, maybe to the other restraining line, but hey, when you got the ball in your stick, you'll take it any day of the week. He's just playing around with it, a little hockey style there. <laughs> Here come those third line middies again. Had a good game against St. Bonaventure, so maybe they showed Coach Gates something that he liked and that he's given them their chance. Here's Carter Kempney. Over to Hiltz. Syracuse moving the ball very quickly. That's really is but taking this offense to another step this year. Quick ball movement. Molina looking for a hat trick. Didn't have a great angle, though. Good defense as well applied by Christensen. Curse. That goal line extended, misses wide to the left. Curse likes that matchup. He's so physical on the dodge. He's, he's a stocky kid, so he gets into the defender and he's able to get his face. 6'2, 210 pounds. Good size for a mini. Shot put on. That's a goal. Tyler Cortez this time gets on the board. Third line midfielders going at it again, partner. And he's fired up. We talked about depth being so important with the second line midfielders. How about the third line midfielders? They got a ton of looks on this possession, and then they cash in with Cortez. The Orange are lighting it up right now. They lead Hobart 8-4 to four with three minutes left in the second. I mean, hey, if you have Luke Schwartz and Zach Letson on your TV screen, you have to tune in, right? I mean, there, there's just no other way around it. The Orange, though, they're pretty fired up. Up four on one of their biggest Central New York rivals in Hobart. Eight for the score with three minutes left in the second quarter with Devin Malloy out of Trey Redfield. Glad to have you back with us. Greg Raymond looking for another spark coming out of this timeout. Gary Gate is looking for some more goals put up as he puts Johnny Rachusa back in. But it's Adam Shea that wins the draw. Darren pass here, though, from the Fogo over to Chad Bach, leads to Syracuse with a chance to go up five. A lot of shooting themselves in the foot from Hobart. Errant passes on big possessions. You can't have that if you're going to beat a team like Syracuse. That was emphasized a ton by Coach Raymond. Not to make too many mistakes. That's how it's been throughout the year. Lots of mature decisions and wins. Not so much mature decisions in losses. That's the key to any sport, honestly. True. If you keep your head in the pressure situations, you're going to come out on the right side. Here's Finn Thompson. Shimmy to the left. It's stopped by Wilson. Maybe another chance here for the Orange on the rebound. But coming out of his cage to collect, at least try to, is Wilson. Lost it for a second. Gets decked at the end line. I love Wilson's game. He's a little honey badger. Making saves, running around, getting in the mix. 
Love that energy. Very physical as well, but how about the defense applied? This time it's from Michael Leo. Going from offense, carrying it over to defense. The Syracuse ride has been great. They do a great job at getting the defensive midfielders involved on the ride, and they're the best at covering guys coming up the field, so why not have them down there? 100 seconds to go in this second quarter, and Syracuse calls a timeout. Syracuse calls timeout. The Orange have one remaining. So you got a minute 39 seconds left. You're up four. You have the ball. You have an opportunity to go up even more at halftime. Who are you looking to go to on this next offensive possession when they come out of the huddles? Syracuse hasn't done a ton of pick plays yet. I wouldn't mind a low wing pick play for Hiltz coming up strong on his left hand or doing a big little behind with Spelina. Now a big little is when you take one of those short stick defensive midfield matchups and bring him behind along with an attack when it has a long pole and try to get the matchup mix so then Spelina, can, who's a formidable dodger, can beat a short stick. Those are the two things I would go for. Leo has been fantastic too, so if the first option doesn't work, look for him to take a dodge. And if you're Wilson, and you as a goalie as well, you're someone that's looking for a particular type of shot. Is there a certain shot that you think Wilson has done well with so far in this game that he wants to have in this second quarter? The low angle stuff he's been pretty good on, so keep everybody out of the middle, and that's defense 101. I don't want to see any shots from the middle. True. So that's number one, but I could see him sending slides a little bit earlier on those low wing dodges because he doesn't want the angle to improve too much. He's been strong staring down the shooters. I think movement has given him a little bit of trouble. His personality has been a spark on his Hobart team. Just took over the starting role last week in that win against Providence, had 12 saves. Becomes the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Week. We agreed. We were like, yeah, not a bad way to start out a college <laughs> career, right? But yeah. goalie of the year in New Jersey. And Coach Raymond talked about how he just, he and the coaching staff, they felt that he was seeing it well. And that can just go, that can be the extra mile that gets you into the role as a starting goalie. And they're entering a very important part of their season. You need consistency in net, and Wilson delivers that. Syracuse, the last non-conference opponent for Hobart. After this, it begins Atlantic 10 play. The first year that A-10 has had a, has had a men's lacrosse conference as Hiltz misses wide to the right. There was your pick play, Trey. Me and Pat March on the same page. <laughs> Tele telepathy? And here telepathy. we go, big telepathy. little, big little after that. Here's Bellina. Doesn't get that short stick matchup, though, that you were looking for. <laughs> had he, though, possibly a hat trick. Someone that's looking for one as well is Michael Leo, and he misses high and wide to the right. Upper Hobart, you got St. Bonaventure, High Point, St. Joe's, Richmond, and UMass. That's the group of teams that they have in a newly formed A-10. Here's Polina on that screen play. Bouncer misses wide to the left. This time it was Alex Simmons with the shot. You got 32 seconds on the shot clock. A minute three on game. Leo on the wing. Spins to his left. Fires. Scores! Hats off! A hat trick for the freshman. This kid is playing out of his mind. He's finding his game before our eyes right now. He stepped on campus, and he was one of the best Dodgers on the team. What Coach Gate wanted him to work on was his shooting. Well, I'll tell you what, today he's figured that out. His third goal of the game, a nice little rollback. He's essentially unguardable, and then he uncorks a high-to-high -high shot, top left corner. Great stuff from Michael Leo. He was quiet in the St. Bonaventure game on Tuesday. Just one shot against the body today. Three shots. Three goals. That's a season high. I think sometimes when you play in those games too, it's good to get the depth guys going a little bit. And he's in that limbo place, right? Like he's a second line midi, he's a first line midi. So he might have taken a back seat there and let the other guys get going. He did get the start today, but it's at a point in time with Syracuse, you know, they want to do whatever they can to build the confidence before going into the gauntlet. That begins next week. The confidence is going to be huge. We've got Notre Dame, top defensive program year in and year out. If you can get some firepower on offense, it's massive. Number one team in the nation going up against Virginia. You and I were cracking a joke about how this was the biggest game of the weekend. <laughs> it is. This is huge. This is a rivalry game. Right. Hobart uses one of its two timeouts with 40 seconds in the second quarter. 
So, gonna ask you the same question just this time on the other end. Who do you go to this time around? Because Hobart desperately needs a goal. I think I'm going to Chad Bach, honestly. He was really strong in the invert game. He might have a long pull on him here. If he doesn't, I would bring him to X, try to get the defense moving. Maybe that frees up the tail is. If that doesn't work, I'm going to detail us. I think he wants the ball, and he's made some good, hard moves and gotten some great shots. But when we're in nice and tight, when we're playing relaxed, okay, and we're just kind of tentative to a degree, they're doing whatever they want. We told you. As a comfortable group, they're very good. If you can get out and be a little bit more physical, they'll struggle a little bit more. But you got to be willing to do it, okay? you got to extend more to make sure that Dodgers are uncomfortable. Good? Let's go. That's exactly what he told us on Thursday morning. If you put Syracuse in a comfortable environment in the dome, you got to find a way to step up. You got to find a way to take a deep breath. It looks like they're playing very tight right now. I bet that's case in point in this first half. What he was really telling them to do there was on defense. Don't let Syracuse just run around and make their passes. Yeah. Get out on them, pressure them, get on their hands, make them uncomfortable doing routine things. And at midfield, Hobart has put itself in this game, especially in the second quarter. I mean, five wins for the statesman, statesman, just one for the Orange. But still, it's SU that's outscoring Hobart in this second frame. But one last try here for Hobart to get back onto the scoreboard before the first half closes. There's Jack Grooms. Going to go to that dominant hand on the right. Very well by Avilas. Out down to 10 seconds. Statesman's got to go quick. Shot is blocked. Enough time here to get a good shot. Yep, I'm going right to Detailus. Have him dodge hard. Detailus with five seconds left. One last shot here. He has the opening. He shoots it. Bounces wide to the right. The defense stays stout. And now it's the orange. That go into the halftime locker room up five with the Krause Simmons Trophy on the line. The 108th meeting between these two. And it's Syracuse that is cruising after two quarters of play. The Orange Nine, Statesman Four, here on ACC Network Extra. Guys, Syracuse with a 9-4 advantage on Hobart right now. And another rendition of the Krause Simmons Trophy. The Orange with a five goal lead. But let's lean into some pregame sound coming from some Syracuse legends. And in 1986 was the first time we played for this trophy. We played at Hobart. And they beat us the first year of the trophy. And we won it, I think, about 90% of the time since then. So I wish you all the best. I don't wish you luck. I don't believe that. I believe you're a better team so you can win the game. So I wish you all blue skies and green light. Simmons family fired up. Roy Simmons Jr., legendary head coach for the Orange. Imagine if you got to play for Roy Simmons Jr. That'd be pretty sweet, right? It'd be awesome. My dad played for him. Right. He's a Great, great impact on the program. The biggest in college across, honestly. And he had such a connection with all the players. They talk about him like he's their second father. Yeah. And they feel that even after their career as well after. And Roy Simmons third talked about it. Now in 1986, they beat him. Yeah, they did. It was a D3 school. Sam Alexo drives in. The bouncer is stopped by Wilson. Now Hobart has to clear. But losing it was Sanat. But back to that point in 1986, that was the first time they played for this trophy. This is the 108th time they've played against one another, just as the game itself. But in 86, Hobart was a D3 school, and they ended up actually beating Syracuse, who at the time was the best team in Division I, ranked number one in the nation. Any given day. Any given day. It can happen. And Hobart's been hanging around in this one. Had a lead to start out. But since then, it's been all Q's up five to start out this third quarter. Trey, we talked about Syracuse making decisions, being better in these high-intensity high, high intensity moments. This is a high-intensity moment. Come out, 
and continue to play the way that you were playing. Don't let Hobart get back into this. Syracuse has done a very good job in containing Matalis. Has one goal in the afternoon, but that's about it. A lot of physicality from Sam Alexa. The Orange's best long stick midi. Here's Baltz. Defense applied by Finn Thompson. This is a great matchup for Hobart. Finn Thompson playing defense. Baltzer with the feed in the middle. Nobody's there. It's the Taylor that picks up the ground ball, but he's dead. The Syracuse defense coming in strong once again. But what's even stronger is the Orange in transition. This time they reset, though, to take a deep breath. Very took a beating there on that on that dodge. Sam Alexa's played fantastic today. And sometimes and we talked about this at, the, at near the top of the broadcast when you know it's, it's with defenders. Sometimes it's not the numbers that tell the entire story. It's just keeping the ball out of the net and doing your job, and right. he does it with the best. Curse at X. Back to Hiltz. Play catch. Here's Luke Rogan his first touch of the half as Spelina lost the handle a bit. Ball rolls to the end line. Technically, that was a shot, so it resets to 60. And now Spelina can go back to work behind Cage. Don't overrule him. He saw he said he can't make calls. The trail official, and now he's going to make the call. Pat March doesn't like the whistle. I love all the the mic stuff. This is just great. <laughs> like this, like the, the us being in the huddle with Coach Raymond and that set at the end of the second quarter. That was cool. Back to 21, I believe it was at. It hit behind the goal. Thank you. Sorry. You saw that from here. Did I hear the close? Look, was 21 on the shot clock? Was it 20? I think you recall. Recall, please. Yep. So they're not going to reset the clock. They're going to say it was technically not a shot on goal, and it will go back to where it was, which looks like 27 <laughs> seconds. That's what I'm saying. It didn't look like a shot. And the reason why I said it was because they reset it to 60. Definitely a low angle. Spelina pulls it a little bit. You can't really tell. Leave it up to the officials. Now here is Curse on the doorstep. They score. That was definitely a shot on goal. We have 22 getting involved in all different ways today. Here he gets stuff started on the end line. PDJ kids are going to love this one. Spelina from X carries up. He's got a lot of attention. And then Cursed, great all-around player. He can dodge, he can cut and finish on the crease. There you see him in that finisher role. 13th goal of the year for the Lehigh transfer. Also, the second goal today, the Q's captain. So now Shane Fine at midfield. It's a category that Hobart is leading today, but this time it's Fine that wins the draw at the dot. Stacked by Shea in the process near the restraining line. Look at this fight for the ground ball. The faceoffs have been awesome. They've been scrums, yeah. long ground balls, everyone's battling. Love to watch that. Wasn't the best start though. The faceoff violation to begin, you thought, oh no. But from that, it has only progressed into great faceoffs. Just getting the jitters out, you know. Yeah, nothing too crazy. <laughs> Happens to everybody. Happens on the broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Rosa. Back to the Taylors. On top with Grooms. Has a goal today. This time gives it off to Zach Delaney. First time we're mentioning his name today. Syracuse Dave that pointed on the dog. 25 seconds to shoot for Hobart, who trails by six, four minutes into this third quarter. Another dish to the Tamas. 
screen. Now has an opening. Fires. Stopped by Mark. Here goes the Orange once again. Alexo collects the bouncer. He has two pole goals today. The third misses. Thought that bouncer was going to go in. It looked so true, especially with how great Syracuse is in transition. But now you get the ball into the stick. The best player on this team is Joey Spolina, who facilitates the X. If you're going to take a shot in transition, you want to miss and get the back up. That's exactly what Alexo did. I'm sure he wants that back. And I bet you Mark wants that back, because that would have been an assist for Will Mark. Yes. You know goalies love their points. I did. You, you, yeah, of course you did. <laughs> minutes into the third now. Syracuse still holding on to that 10-4 lead. Hiltz puts on a shot, misses wide to the left. Syracuse looking for that pick play for Hiltz to get that left hand free coming up top. He's so deadly in that area. Ooh. How about top shelf? Syracuse continues to answer, and this time it's going. That makes it a seven goal Cuse lead. The reserve midfielders have been huge for Syracuse today. They're scoring big goals and big moments. Here we have an individual effort, a nice little swim move on that short stick matchup, buries it upstairs. This little head fake looking down and then putting it up top, that makes it very dis difficult for goalies to read the shot. Great move by Cohen. John Cohen getting welcome back to the Syracuse bench. Those third line midfielders that got a lot of praise from Coach Gate after the 16 goal win against St. Bonaventure, a game that featured 14 different scores. Why not continue to keep it moving with different guys? Second goal of the year for Cohen in four games. Sometimes as a player, you just need that too, that confidence booster. You play a weaker opponent, you see the ball go in the net, you get a couple points, and then you get in bigger games like this rivalry game, and it's all second nature again. Fine wins the face off, but now the question is, who can he get the ball to? Answer is Owen Hills. Ben Thompson comes in for the focus. It's a great time for Syracuse that Finn Thompson's been a little quiet today, and they have 11 goals. Thompson against the Bonnies had a goal and an assist. I haven't seen him on the score sheet yet this afternoon. Here's Thompson that had it for a second, but they got decked. Curse collects. He's looking for a hat trick and misses wide to the left. Hobart's getting beat on a lot of 50-50 plays. We had another one there. If they want to come back in this game, you got to get those second chances out. Spolina working on the screen from Leo. Up top, Curse with the bouncer. The stop is made by Wilson. Thought we were going to have ourselves a five hole there, but either way, Hobart works quickly in transition. Cross of Alex Rosa. Lots of family here for this one. Yeah, Max Rose on the other side. Their dad played lacrosse and football at Hobart, and their uncle was on the football and wrestling teams at Syracuse. And if you want to add more spice to it, Sam Rosa is playing for St. Bonaventure on Tuesday. It's always a family affair with Syracuse, but it's great to have that history across other programs. Flags fly. It's a delayed penalty. And another flag comes with that as well, a late one, too. Definitely going to get Finn Thompson for a cross check here. I'm not sure what the other flags will be. But the first one was delayed. The second one will probably go against Syracuse as well, knowing it was physicality from Thompson on the baseline. Number 19, number 19, too many men, too many men, 30 seconds. 27, he's got a one minute cross check. I think that was a mistake from the official. I think it was 23 Finn Thompson with the cross check. And then looks like Simmons had an issue with the subbing. So that was the 
off ball penalty. Then you got Finn Thompson trying to make a play here. I think it's a little bit later when he gets behind the cage. Oh, there's two. Yeah, there's one right there. He's cross-checking everybody out there. Right. <laughs> yeah, so it's Simmons and Thompson that take one knee. So Hobart is two men up for 30 seconds, but will be a man up for another 30 after that. There's no 27. It's 19 to 23. Oh, look at the scoop shot. Hobart takes advantage, and this time it's Alex Rosa. Absolute gas from Alex Rosa. Was just about to highlight him as the danger man on the man up, and there he makes Syracuse pay. He's got a huge shot, nine goals on the season, make that 10 after this one. Gets Syracuse defense rotating, finds a pocket in the defense, and then he's got this great low to high shot right in the upper corner. Yeah, the Rosa family there in the box. He talked about you know, father being at Hobart, uncle being at Syracuse, them on the field. And there's Sam Rosa. There's the icing on the cake with the spice, too, having the whole family in attendance for this one. I mean, how can you not miss a game like this? And I guess you just root for both kids to play well. You just hope yeah. they both have fun. It's kind of a win-win. Yeah. But I mean, maybe in Max and Alex's eyes, it's not. More, more discussion at the Thanksgiving dinner table being upset with one another, <laughs> saying who has the one-up on who. As another flag comes in off the mark save, that looked like a substitution issue as well. And if it's against Syracuse, Hobart can take advantage once again. Or is the unnecessary on the other end? White, 3-3. Three, three. One minute, unnecessary late hit. 3-3, three, three, White. He must have great eyes. Goes against Caden Cole. Syracuse penalty to number Redshirt sophomore from Danville, California. Started every game this season. He'll take a knee for a minute. Another chance for Hobart to convert on what was, or what is, excuse me, its second man up opportunity. Just a few seconds ago, that was the first time the statement had a man advantage. This game's getting a little chippy right now. Refs are making calls. It's Adam Davis getting his first touch. I haven't mentioned him today. Not play against Providence. Look at the effort from the Syracuse defense. Creates a yard sale. Ball still fought for. Who has it? It's like Green had it for a minute. Referees get involved, though, and Syracuse takes over. Looks like an illegal procedure on that ground ball. That'll give the ball to the orange. Great defensive play to knock down the pass. Detalis needs to continue to move his feet. Even though you don't have any pressure on you, defensemen can get in the passing lanes. That makes it easy for them to pick it off if you're not moving your feet. Griffin Cook hobbling a little bit after that stick check as flags come in once again. Now for Syracuse, it's just time to kill that penalty. 13 seconds remain with Cole in the box. Looks like we have two flags again. I think there might have been an offsides on the ride and then another slash or unnecessary roughness call, but like we said, it's getting chippy. The reason why that first half moves so quickly, you and I were talking about how we blinked, and next thing you know, there are three minutes left in the second quarter. No penalties were called. Tail of two halves. Clean game, and now we're getting a little dirty. Here's Roa. This is the grip and cook. The bouncer goes. The captain's seventh goal on the year. An and one for Syracuse. They get the flag. Why not go get the goal now? They've been moving the ball so well. They're exposing the inside on Hobart. Have a nice drive here by Roa. Looks inside, finds Griffin Cook. He cashes in. Cues up. Talked a lot about this game being a Rosa family affair. Well, it started here in Syracuse. Max and Alex played at West Genesee High School. Wearing the yellow jerseys for the Wildcats. Family in attendance. You see the split shirts with the Rosa family pregame. Now they're up in the box at 10 and the 13. There's a whole lot of this this afternoon that we've seen recently. Now they're up in the 
box right now and to put a bow on this whole Rosa talk that we have coming out into this third quarter midway through with Syracuse out 12-5. Alex Rosa is in the penalty box for a minute with slashing, but you see the family history right there. So Thomas played at Hobart, was in the Hobart Lacrosse Hall of Fame, also played football. Then there's the uncle Steve Rosa, who went to Syracuse, was on the football team and on the wrestling team. He graduated in 1980. Great family all around. Two great kids too. Very athletic family. And then Sam at St. Bonaventure. You could say the Roses own Central New York. <laughs> That's a big face-off win for Hobart. They can kill this penalty now. True. That's exactly what the Statesmen are doing. You have 38 seconds on the man up, 56 seconds on the shot clock. And when they get the six on six, they really haven't looked so bad on offense. They're getting the looks they want. The shooting needs to improve. Take an extra step, really collect yourself, and then let that thing fly. Will Mark's too good of a goalie to get 80% of what you can bring. Shorthand goal would be nice, but say Mark makes that save, Hobart could be dead in transition. They're going to wait for Rosa here. Now down to one second. Oh, and Alex comes back in. Back to full strength. And with full strength, Hobart has 15 seconds to get up a shot. That's how much time is left on the shot clock. Over to Grooms. And she's behind Cage. Bob has a goal today. And this time looking for an assist. As the shot clock runs out. Just lost awareness of the shot clock that's right in front of them over on the left side. You're taught to take your time when you come out of a dodge, but when the shot clock's winding down, you really don't have time to collect yourself and find the next move. You gotta just keep going, and Hobart got caught there. See the Orange offense get back to work. Here's Cole Curse using his strength in search of his third goal. Gives it up to Hiltz. He's not there on the other end, and it's Wilson that collects the ground ball. A little sloppy there from Syracuse. They're playing with the lead. I'm okay taking that look. Commanding lead right now as well, up seven. Four minutes to go in this third quarter. Transition here for Hobart. Simus ripping, it may have rung off the pipe. But either way, Hobart keeps it with the tail is behind Cage. Simus is a good player. Moves very quickly. Speaking of Simus, he just went to the floor. Athletic guy, good shot. Syracuse takes over. I think Simus might have stepped in the crease there coming around the cage. It's now coming off of the reset. Griffin Cook with it at midfield. Over to Luke Rowe. Number 24 recruit in the class of 22 is a four star. Here's a shot that sails high from Rowe. It's a good take. I think some of the guys who haven't gotten involved here are going to start getting more involved. Roa hasn't really been too involved in the offense. Look for him to take some more shots here. This is the third quarter that Syracuse outscored St. Bonaventure in 9-0 on Tuesday. Today, outscoring the state from now 4-1 because it's a hat trick for Joey Spolina. Or the guy who's been involved all day can keep being involved. That too. That works. <laughs> But we did see Roa involved back there on the pick play. We talked about the big littles a little bit here. Here he's setting the screen for Spelina. Big miscommunication there for Hobart. That check's not going to bother a guy like Joey Spelina at all. He comes around, takes the extra step to greatness, beats Wilson easily. So now this one means a little bit more. It's his 26th goal in the year, but it passes Gary Gate for 10th on the freshman scoring record. And nothing like passing your head coach, right? Might get him out of some sprints, honestly. <laughs> That's what I'd say. Maybe put him into more sprints, saying, hey, hey. you're better than me. I'm going to make you pay. <laughs> you can't make me run. I have more goals than you your freshman year. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to have to sit this one out. No big deal. 
Shea wins the faceoff, but another errant pass leads to another chance for Syracuse to capitalize its lead. And look who's first to get to it, wanting to work quickly. It's 22. Here come those third line middies. They've been great today. Carter Kentley coming in. Cohen as well. She has it on the right wing. Hilts it out. The dish to Kurtz. This is why. Syracuse's decision making is perfect right now. They're really just reacting to what's coming to them. It's not like they're taking too long. They're not unsure of themselves. They're just moving the ball around, making the next pass. They know what they're supposed to do, and they're executing. That's a Cohen. Already has a goal today. Up top to Hiltz. Thought about the shot. Now he rips it, and Wilson's there with the same. Quality save for Wilson. It's not easy to stay high when someone has that type of angle. Stares that shot down. Good save on Hill. It's one of the best. Walter clears by himself. A couple of flags fly. This is a delayed penalty here for Hobart. Ref's really getting involved in this quarter. What is this, a sixth flag that you see? Well, there's two every time they throw one, so. <laughs> Scott's and I. Defense applied by Rice. Physical as well. Barthelme up top. Shot missed wide from the tails. Now we get to find out what the penalty is to be exact. I know that missed Cage, but that was the best shot to Taylor's took. He stepped into that one. He let it rip. Clean look, too. Didn't hit the net, but that's how he has to shoot. He can't lollipop these to Mark. White, 2-9, technical 30, technical 30, offsides. 2-9, White, 30, offside. Cover, cover. This, one, this one is against Tyler Cordes. Cuse is riding hard. You get to the midfield line. you got to be really smart about making sure you have three guys back on that attack position. If I'm Coach Gary Gate, though, I'm taking that penalty with how the rides looked. You give that one up, hopefully your defense gets a stop. They've made so many turnovers. Hobart working in the man up once again. Already has a man up goal in this third quarter. Right now, they're trailing by eight. A lot of pressure from Cuse here on the man up. They don't care that they have one less guy. They're getting out on Hobart's hands. Davis to Delano. State's been swinging around. To Rosa, he has a goal today. This pass is deflected. Syracuse is back to full strength. Twenty seconds to shoot for Hobart as Rosa takes a peek at the clock behind him. Brother on brother here. Here's the matchup we all wanted. This is what we needed. <laughs> Taylor works up top. Drives into his left. Hobart's got to go fast. Three seconds to shoot now. Can they get it off in time? It sails high. Another shot clock violation. This Syracuse defense has come alive and then some in this third quarter. At all levels, too, Trey. Starts with Will Mark. The down low defense has been great. Sam Alexo in between the lines has been great. And then the short stick defensive midfielders have been up to the task. They have no holes today. Ben Thompson, it's Alex Simmons. Back to Simmons. Syracuse looking to tack on one more before this third quarter closes. Up 13-5 and outscoring Hobart 4-1 in this third set of 15. Getting this hang up view, no pressure on him. He's got the defenseman stuck in the crease. Norris love to play the waiting game. Patience is a key. Up top to Leo. Has three today. Behind the back pass to Hiltz. There's a save. The putback, though, is there. Finn Thompson gets on the board in the nick of time. Finn Thompson is a smooth operator. He's never uncomfortable on the field. We have a great pass from Michael Leo to kick this thing off. 
Nice little rollback. He sees Hiltz flash, throws a behind the back feed. Hiltz gets some good speed on that shot, forces the rebound, and then Finn Thompson, right place, right time. It's not as easy as it looks to pick up a ground ball and put it in the back of the net. Completely poised, great finish by Thompson. His 13th goal of the season, his first one on the afternoon. It's his second point today. Had an assist earlier in this one. That's where I wish there were hockey assists, because that pass from Leo got the defense spinning. It made Finn Thompson get open, and it was an awesome pass, that behind the back. He's feeling himself today. One last base off before the third quarter buzzer sounds. Syracuse in complete control of this one. The Orange 14, Hobart 5 after three quarters of play. And re yesterday, just yesterday, there was an article that came out from Inside the Cross detailing the impact freshman. And these three guys were on that list. Bolina was second, Thompson was sixth, Leo was 30th. They're all living up to the task, not just today, but this season. I see no lies here, too. I mean, Finn Thompson and Spelina, they're definitely top 10 impact freshmen. I think number seven can creep up that list, too, as the year goes on. Spelina and company looking for more in this fourth quarter. 15 minutes away from making it 10 straight against Hobart. That's not the statesman, the statesman won this game. This matchup was 2013. I was here. Yeah, you were on the sidelines in a jumpsuit, red shirt, and great but game. It, hey, the games, the, the seasons you played, though, they won. That's true. Shot sales high. And now Hobart can reset behind Cage. The Orange in this series, 79, 26, and two. Here's Delano, has an opening, shoots, stopped once again by none other than Will Mark. Hobart's a very strong dodging team. They're getting good looks. Delano they are rolled back at the middle of the field. Wasn't a strong hand, but still a clean look from 12 yards out. They have to improve their shooting. There's not enough speed on this to beat a goalie that's quality. 12 saves for Mark today, but let's talk a little bit about top ranked Syracuse women's across. Back in action today, just crushed Louisville on the road. 17 to five, the final. I mean, here we're on the air, we were, we were talking about this with our producer, Kristen Hennessy. She was talking, she, she asked us, so they've been on the air for like six minutes. Guess what it is right now? And we said four nothing, five nothing, no. It was already three nothing. Just in a blink of an eye, that's just what it tells you with Kayla Trainer's squad. Kayla Trainer's building something special. Even she was here as a player as a bucket comes loose. The chippiness and physicality that we saw in the third quarter carrying over into the fourth. It's a rivalry game with a lot of history. Even if the score is not close, you're going to have chippiness. These teams don't like each other. So when there's an opportunity to hit someone, you're going to take it. You have Hiltz there. Gets a good lick. But this is going to carry throughout the game. Hobart's going to be a prideful team. They're going to do their best to, you know, try to come back, make this thing close, but at least inflict some wounds on Cuse. We had loose ball, safety commit helmet was off. We're going AP, so it's white ball. Okay. So Syracuse keeps. Looks like uh, Bobby Balzer needs to tighten his chin strap a little bit on that replay. Looks like a little. Looks like it was a little loose. Some guys like to rock it a little loose. It's dangerous. Were you a loose guy or a tight guy? Well, I was in the goal. I was tight. Yeah, you did. Yeah, good choice. Good point. <laughs> Just have to ask. You never know. <laughs> Some people like to live on the edge. Fair enough. Is it recommended? No. No, not at all. But I'm glad you're making the right choice. Blaino will reset the offense at X. 50 seconds to shoot. So there's a flag that comes in. Syracuse to get an and one here. Spelina, oh, look at the behind the hat back pass. Put up, and Wilson collects. Leads to another pause and play. And more words. Yeah, we talked about the chippiness here. Just in plain sight. 
Roa is going to set a screen, gets a cross check to the back. Everybody in the building saw that. It's going to get called. 29 blue, 29 blue, 30 seconds interference. 29 blue, 30 seconds interference. And back to your point to everyone seeing it. Let's check this out. So yeah, they knew. And also, Joey Spolina knew. It wasn't seen in the shot there, but Spolina was at X, and he was pointing at, hey, where's the call there? He gets it. And now it leads to Syracuse having a man advantage with 30 seconds. Some frustration from Hobart. Orange can go up 10. How about the quick stick shot? This time it comes from Roa. This is too easy for the best man up unit in the country. You have Hiltz carrying. Right here he's carrying behind. Burt Whistle just makes a simple cut to the middle. No one covers him. Tic-tac-toe passing, that's easy. Check that, that was Jackson Burt Whistle that scored. It's his 19th goal this season. I gotta say, even with, with the with the eights and the nines on these jerseys, they find a way to get to you. <laughs> even, with the, even with the names on the back. The guy's got to start getting on Burt Russell for having no assists. Nineteen goals, no assists. I was talking about that with one of with one of my friends, Jack Gordon, who's the analyst for Tuesday's game. I was like, when is Burt Whistle going to get an assist? And he's trying to figure it out with me as well. We weren't exactly sure, but when it comes, it's going to be a monumental day. <laughs> Broken stick on the field. Nobart looking for some sort of spark. He ignites something down 10. Wisconsin on. Triple team. Gets a stick up towards the chin area, and flags come in. His shot sails high and wide. And John Drew just puts his hands up, asking, I mean, what, what, else, what else was there for me to do there, you know? <laughs> if you like man up, man down, this is the game for you, or at least the half for you. All these calls are fair, too. A lot of loose play in the head. 35 white, one minute slash. One minute. Billy Juan will take an E for a minute. Freshman from Lutherville, Maryland. So you got Considine driving here. Gets a lot of pressure from the poles, and they're all up towards his head. A ref's going to call that every time. Talking things over with Coach Ben Tramala. It's Alex Rosen. So Bart moves fast to the ball. Steve is pretty fast paced. We talked about it at the top of the broadcast. Syracuse defense has been up to the task all day. Pass sails over the head of Sam Ward, and now Syracuse goes back into offense. And they buried Rosa in the crease there to be a finisher. He's the only guy who's beaten Will Mark from distance. Yeah. You have to get him in a position to shoot. And now with Hobart being a man up, Syracuse can just slow this thing down and take the time off the clock. But the way the Orange are moving, it seems like maybe they'll start something, maybe score a shorty. Unlike what Hobart did, they just played the waiting game. That's exactly what Syracuse is going to do. This fourth quarter is a great time for Syracuse to get these third line middies more experience, maybe even get some other reserve attackmen involved. See what you have in depth scoring. You never know who can shine in these moments. I think Johnny Cohen's a great player. He can dodge, feed, shoot. He's showing it with the goal today. Here's Carter Kepney. Back to his right on Main Street. Quickly dishes. 20 seconds to shoot for the Cubes. Molina. Coming off the stick. Maybe goes behind the back. Sidewinder this time is stopped. Great save. What a save by Wilson. You have the best player on the field today, carrying up to his strong hand, shoots it low and away, does everything he's supposed to do, and then your freshman goaltender makes a sweeping kick save. He's done his part. If I'm Coach Raymond, I have a lot of confidence in Wilson after this. Right. He stood saves. tall in the dome. That saves against Syracuse? Why not? Flags coming in on the other side of the field. 
Another late hit. Syracuse fans don't like it. A couple of boos coming in inside the dome. Coach Raymond talked to us about how competitive Detalis was, how intense he was. I'm sure this game is bothering him. I'd like to see him get a goal to, to get that confidence back up. John Hurley, his shot, five hole, and one. Hobart's had some great individual efforts today. Hurley's goal is the next one. So it looks like the flag will be wiped off because it was a 30 second technical foul. Back to Hurley. He picks up this ground ball. This is actually Sam Alexo, which is a tough cover. But he makes one hard move and just goes. No slide help, nice jump shot, beats Mark. This is a hard save for Will Mark. When you jump, you get more velocity on that going low. He's close enough to the net that as quick as Mark is, he can't get down in time. Flag is wiped off. Face-off violation goes against Hobart. Syracuse with a chance to answer right back. Five minutes into this fourth quarter, Hobart just got back on the board. But it's the Orange with a commanding 15-6 lead. Little hidden ball trick from Syracuse. Look at this. Oh, oh it missed wide to the right. Wilson had no idea. Simmons was just inches away from making Sports Center. You have Wilson looking up at Finn Thompson, thinking Finn Thompson has the ball, and Simmons just misses a highlight reel goal. Went to the wrong corner, but Simmons is back with it. Could you imagine Spelina behind the back and then the hidden ball trick as well? That's a one-two punch every lacrosse fan wants. How about another Spelina behind the back for good measure? Now play. <laughs> He keeps it rolling. Simmons couldn't deliver on the hidden ball trick, but Spillina's got some tricks of his own. Again, this methodical dodge, absorb the contact, get to this five and five where attackmen really like to get because they have all their options. And then Spillina has coined this shovel backhand shot, puts it in his right hand, defensemen have to respect the righty shot, and then he just tucks it behind his back, low corner. Go back to that point where you don't know when it's coming. Talking so much about the hidden ball trick. If you blink, you just missed the behind the back goal once again from Spolina. That was the case with me. I was, <laughs> we were talking the, uh, the hidden ball trick, and next thing you know, you, you think to yourself, oh, no way. No way you just said that, right? That's when Syracuse at his best. Highlight reels. Creativity. There you go. Gary Gate brought it, and he's the one leading the way for the Orange. Back to that 10 goal lead for the Orange. The largest margin of victory in this series between the two in the 108 games that they've played is 16. Hobart has done it twice. Syracuse has done it just once. Blanking Hobart 16-0 back in 1928. Will it get to that point? I don't know, but it's there. Griffin Cook has the goal today. Can't get his second, though. Nice save by Wilson. It's 11 now. Syracuse looks so unselfish today, just really spinning the ball. Oh, look at the spin dodge from the Taylor. Drives in. Couldn't finish, though. Great check at the end there. I think it was Alexo who comes out with the ball. Alexo and Dwan on the defense. It was Alexo that cleared, but Juan, his, he was the last pull that got in right before DeTalus was about to shoot. You see it from DeTalus. He has the goods. He's been getting his shot. He just went through three Q's defensemen. It's just not finishing. It's also been that Syracuse defense staying tough as well. And a pretty good goalie in cage. That too. <laughs> Put all that together. It's been a defensive performance that's been phenomenal for the Qs. Look at this spin move. The shot is blocked. Back to your point about Cohen dodging so well. 
Case in point. I'm jumping on the Johnny Cohen bandwagon today. <laughs> That's exhibit A. He's going to be a player. Curse behind Cage. Still looking for that hat trick. Cohen with the spin. His shot. It goes in. Hop on that bandwagon while you can. Johnny Cohen's got a complete game. Over the last week, we've seen him shoot the ball, feed the ball, and today he's been dodging. His first goal was a swim move, low angle, nice up top finish. Here he takes his time on a brilliant inside roll, absorbs the contact, nice little dip past Wilson. Cuse is rolling. Creativity is the name of the game for Syracuse Mets across, so we've seen that and then some today. We got behind the backs from Joey Spelina, hidden ball tricks that just missed. And you said it, Trey, that's when they're at their best, but it's really that they're playing loose. They've been in these tight situations where they can't make these dazzling plays because if they don't cash in, it's a problem. But here they have a lead, and we're really seeing the talent that's all over this roster. Creativity that's led by that man, Gary Kate, in his second year with the Orange. Played at Syracuse as well, has his number 22 in the rafters. Just had Mike Powell's 22 go up alongside him over on the right side here at the Dome. He was pretty creative, too. Just a little bit. <laughs> Johnny Rechusa wins the faceoff. We're back underway midway through the fourth quarter. Syracuse with a 17-6 advantage over Hobart. Some more reserves coming on. Whole lot of reserves stepping in. This is Barrett White, sophomore from Alexandria. These are some of the best times in the games when you get guys who don't get a lot of playing time, but they've cheered you on in all your big games, and to get a chance to score is just so awesome. Wilson there with the save. And Hobart's still trying to find a way to get somewhat back into this game, get some confidence in the before A-10 play before that clock hits triple zeros. Because after this, it's conference play. Coach Raymond said, we win games, and then we lose games, and then we win games, and then we lose games. And we seem to bring something with yep. us on those losses every single time. Let's find some positives here in this fourth quarter. Win games and lose games is to literally put it. <laughs> they have gone back and forth, Hobart has, in the win and loss comp. You got a win against Canisius, then you lose to Lehigh. Beat Colgate, lose to Cornell. Beat Robert Morris, then lose to Dartman. Then you beat Providence. It's a literal pattern. Those are good wins, very good wins. So it's there, and I've seen good stuff here today. They're getting their hands free against a very good Q's defense. Just gotta bring it all together. Here's the Taylor it rings off pipe. Frustrated himself after the shot. Early with a chance. Does he get his second? No! Mark is there with another save. Early there tried to do the same thing he did on his goal just a few minutes ago with that split to his right hand, jump shot low and away. You're not going to fool Will Mark twice. He is insane. 16 saves, six goals allowed, well over 60% on the year. And he's fourth in the nation coming into today in save percentage. That's behind Liam Etzman, the top-ranked Notre Dame. ACC goalies, just a ton of talent there. Colin Creek from North Carolina is also fantastic. Right. We saw Tim Marcel here in the Dome put on quite a performance. So there's a lot of good goaltending around the country, but I think Will Mark has to be top three. I, I expect him to be on a, a All-American list this, at the end of this year. And just as we talk about Mark, he steps out. His work is done. Harrison Thompson comes in, has four saves this season in three games. Just like I talked about the goals and seeing reserve guys score goals, there's nothing like making a save when you get thrown in in the fourth quarter. You'll take it however you get it. Get a hit in the helmet, whatever. That gets a bench fired up for sure. Oh, and again, that one rings off pipe. Did you bat? I, I, I can't even think of what you would do. But Johnny Cohen got a hat trick. I'm already on the bandwagon. You're already on the bandwagon, but like I feel like... I'd become the conductor, I guess? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like you'd be promoted to conductor. I'm fine with that.
Here's Cohen once again, off the screen from Kemp. Still looking for some options. How about another behind the back? Wow! Blake Earlbeck, this time getting creative. We've seen the creativity all day. Syracuse is feeling it. We got our guy Cohen here with a nice feed, threads the needle. That's the only angle you have there to shoot that behind the back. Cashed it in, piping in too for good measure. That's just gross. Third goal on the year for the redshirt freshman. That was awesome. There's not a lot of guys who can do that. No. The Cali kid gets on the score sheet. So on Tuesday, Syracuse played St. Bonaventure, won by 16. Johnny Bertuzzi wins the faceoff, gets it back to Thompson. But the Orange beat the Bonnies by 16 in that one. He had 14 different goal scorers. Today against Hobart, the Orange are up 12. And with that, 10 different goal scorers today. We talked about the depth. Once you see your good players are getting going, test out the third line middies. Maybe throw in a reserve attackman. See if they're built for the moment. And then when you play a Notre Dame, if someone's not having a good game, you know you can rely on those guys. You gotta build confidence up and down the lineup. And Coach Kate has done a good job of that this week. That Notre Dame team in a dogfight right now with third ranked Virginia. That same Notre Dame team is coming to the Dome next Saturday at two o'clock on ACC Network. I think Cohen's got an earpiece and he can hear the broadcast. He's trying everything. <laughs> A little bit of a heat check. Yeah. Shot misses wide to the right. Cohen was almost there on the bouncer. Now he recollects over on the right sideline with 50 seconds to shoot. Got team captain Pete Fiorini out there. He scored his first goal of the year against the Bonnies. with a 12-goal advantage. Got to put a bow on another edition of the Kraus Simmons Trophy. Pass sent in. No white jerseys there, though. One last offensive push here, more likely than not for Hobart. Now just about do it. I like Coach Raymond leaving Wilson in for the full game. Obviously, this one's out of touch, but have him see some more rubber. We talked about how good Syracuse's depth is. Let him keep getting shots, build that confidence as you move into A-10 play. He's looked very good to me. I don't think this is an easy thing to ask for a freshman goalie to do. Gotta give him some credit. And almost put it at the right time as well. Knowing you start out your conference play next week, and Coach Raymond has talked about it a lot, how A-10 play and just conference play in general is so important because for these one-bid leagues, that's your season right there. That determines if you're going to the NCAA tournament or not. You think about it, you, you can't really afford a loss. You don't know how it's going to shake out, so every game feels like a must win. And Hobart gets back on the score sheet. Losing in his stick in the process, Wisconsin 9, that's his second. Considine's a nice player with a big shot. And what I like about him is he knows how to get his hands free and get shots that he likes. Here he does a nice little underneath finalizer move to split to his right hand. And then he's coming up field. Nice shot overhand, fools Thompson on that inside pipe. Thompson's going to hold that pipe a little bit more. By coming off, he gives more net to Considine. Makes it 18-7 Syracuse. The Orange on the face offense today have won 13 of the 28 draws. This time, coming out on the wing was Kay Dino, freshman from Johnson City, getting his first look today. We thought about a shot there, but gets it back to the lineup. So next up for Hobart, who will fall the 4-4 four four this season. 
Heads back home to take on St. Bonaventure, a team Syracuse crushed on Tuesday that we talked about a lot. 22 to 6 was the final on that. Next up for Syracuse, a team that is working in transition. Maybe a pole goal here, it bounces high. 23 seconds left. Next up for Syracuse, who will move to 6 and 4 overall. It's the beginning of the gauntlet. Top ranked Notre Dame. Next Saturday at 2 o'clock on ACC Network, senior day for the Orange. Then after that, you take on a ranked Princeton team, face North Carolina and only Maryland, at Virginia, then at Duke as well. So yes, it is a gun. It's going to get a lot tougher from here. I like what they learned about themselves, though, in this stretch. Even the games that they lost, they were so close, and it was just little decision making in the fourth quarter. So I think they have the goods to do it. And the Kraus Simmons Trophy is staying right here in Syracuse, New York. The Orange get their ninth straight win over Hobart. 18 to seven, the final inside the dome. Great complete game from Syracuse. Defensively, offensively, the depth scoring. Hobart fought hard. I don't think the score really indicates how tough of a game it was, especially in the first half. They'll look to improve going into that 8-10 play. The Orange get an 11 goal win. And now the Krause Simmons Trophy awaits for the Orange. Make that 80 wins for the Cuse in this series against Hobart. There's Carly Randall, director of operations as of this year with the trophy. And for Hobart, it's another year of having to wait. Haven't won it since 2013, but for the Orange, it's same old, same old. This is big, though, for, the, for Syracuse because they they're freshmen for the most part. They're young players. This is a big moment. It's a rivalry game. Those guys have seen a ton of Kraus Simmons Trophy games. Roy Simmons Jr. and John Desco up there, most recent head coach for the Qs. Getting the trophy from Simi three was always the best because right. he was the director of operations when yeah. I was on the team. So. They'd hand him the trophy, and he loved it. He loved this game. It, it gets you emotional. He was so invested in it because there's so much history with his family. So I mean, and, and you saw the the pregame sound from earlier in, in this game. You know, Simmons the third talking about it, being upset about them losing in 1986. You know, that was the first year as the trophy, and we lost. 100. percent It it really does mean something to the program, despite these programs being on a little bit of different sides of the spectrum and yeah. success. It really matters, and you don't want to be the team that doesn't bring it home to the semis. When you played, other than that red shirt year, you always brought it home. You have to. Got to. Some great games, though. And Hobart has a lot to you know build off of. Not right. a ton of seniors. We talked about how great Wilson was, the freshman goaltender. Detailus has another year. He's having a career year as a junior. A lot of good pieces for this team. They're going to come back hungry again. Or Syracuse is going to have to go there, which is a completely different atmosphere. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see when Syracuse makes a trip back to Geneva. Because that's where I feel like it can be even rowdier than it is in the Dome. Definitely. At night? At night, yeah. too. Yeah. And I was telling you off the broadcast, right. but when we would roll on the, on the bus, we got our bus egged. My... Uh, yeah. Fifth year, they threw they threw an eggs at the bus. Yeah, I told you, the first thing that I woke up to was seeing a tweet from 2017 from Syracuse Men's Lacrosse's Twitter. It says, we have arrived in Hobart. And it was a video <laughs> of someone throwing an egg right at, the, right at your team's bus. Yeah. It's intense there. They got great fans. It's a great program. It's a great rivalry, too. It's unfortunate that. Syracuse went pedal to the metal with this one because it looked like it was going to be a game right off the top. I mean, Hobart scored two straight goals. If you're a Syracuse fan, you think to yourself, oh, man, did they forget to eat their Wheaties this morning? <laughs> but I guess that wasn't the case. And that's another good sign for Syracuse, getting punched in the mouth to start in a rivalry game that's going to be chippy with a team like Hobart, and they were able to bunker down and score six unanswered, I think it was. Six so, unanswered, yeah. yeah. Credit to them. Not a bad way to start out first quarter of play and just keep it rolling as well. Here we go. We got the captains getting the trophy. 
Got and fired up. Fiorini's bringing it over to Simi Jr. and Simi three. They love it. It's for that man right there. Roy Simmons Jr., Roy Simmons the third. You got the fourth, Roy the four next to Desco. Roy the fourth. Desco played a lot of these, or Desco coached in a lot of these games. The boys are fired up, and rightfully so. The final score from the JMA Wireless Dome, 18 to seven over Hobart. The Orange keep the good times rolling in this series against the Statesmen. And we'll look to keep it going next week against Notre Dame on Saturday at 2 on ACC Network. For our producer, Kristen Hennessy, my color commentator, Evan Malloy, I'm Trey Redfield. Thanks so much for joining us, and have a great rest of your weekend.